Good morning. How are you? Good morning. That's Natalie, <laughs> aka Scratch Boss. <laughs> I go ahead and I make myself a nice prep list. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna pull up my menu for tomorrow, and we're gonna start prepping out. When I go about doing a prep list, um, I prep out all of the things that I that I can do without um, knowing that the integrity of the dish of the application won't be affected. We're actually waiting on our delivery. I get all my deliveries in the morning. So we're waiting on our scallop delivery today and tomorrow my, uh, my baldo delivery will be here. <clears throat> so after I do this prep list here, then I'll do the prep list for tomorrow and then we can get going. I have my oven running because we're gonna roll out with some fresh potato gnocchi today. Um, I absolutely love doing fresh potato gnocchi. We're gonna roast off some beets as well. And those are actually very time consuming. between um, between the point at which you've added too much flour and the point at which you need to add more flour. So I can't stress enough, I always tell all my young chefs, organization is key. Your working environment, being clean and neat and organized is so imperative. I have fired so many chefs who are working like slobs. It drives me absolutely crazy and it's not a good look. Your work environment is, your, is a representation of who you are as a professional. Um, if you want to have your, your personal life in disarray, so be it. But if, you know, as a chef, as a cook, you need to be organized, you need to be neat, you need to be clean. Uh, and I, I really, can't, really can't voice that enough. Um, so yeah, without further ado, if you guys want to, uh, if you want to take a trip to the store, I've got to go pick up some ricotta. So we're just gonna run up to the market so you get a little ricotta. So usually I do all my uh, all my food ordering the week before, but occasionally you know things slip through the cracks. Um, sometimes I have to call up my vendor and add something on last minute, or sometimes I've already placed the order and can't get it and I have to run out to the store. And uh, it happens. You obviously, you don't want it to happen, but the store is only two minutes away. It's not that serious. A lot of these new young chefs with the with the awareness that's that's out there with you know um, with all these cooking shows and stuff. Uh, everyone, a lot of a lot of youngsters want to jump in the game and uh, and, and explore it, and they uh, have a passion for it, and that's that's fantastic and that's great. But um, you know, I have a lot of talks with a lot of young chefs. I just explain to them this is this is a type of life that it's honestly it's not for everybody. It's really really not. Um, I have my own business now. And there's times when I'm working 17 hours a day. My day will start at six o'clock in the morning. My dinner may not start till 
7 o'clock at night. So when I get to a client's house, I'm already 13 hours deep into my day and I still have to I still have to have that energy. Um, I still have to bring my A game after 13 hours worth of work and act like I'm, I'm fresh out of bed. And, you know, it's just, uh, this is something that if you don't truly love, you don't really have a passion for, it's just very hard to succeed in it. You know, a lot of guys do it just for, just for a paycheck, and that's fine. But, you know, those guys that do it, or girls that do it just for a paycheck, the quality of their food will completely reflect that lack of passion. Um, and this is something that I, I feel that you should you should have a real serious passion for because unfortunately um, you know you put so many so many painstaking hours in uh, you know you gotta you gotta really really love this so there was a lot I'm not gonna lie there was a lot of times there was a lot of times I was second guessing my career and thinking about making a change um, I'm sure I'm sure I'm not the only profession in which that happens with I'm sure there's a lot of other professionals out there that have had that same crossroad um, but you know what that's just I'm not a I'm not a failure for one and two I'm not one to ever give up so um, I just kept plugging away and plugging away till I till I really found my niche and I'm really doing what I love which is exactly what I'm doing now which is a private chef I'm creating what I want on a weekly basis <laughs> Everybody, we are on our way to Shelter Island. So Sabor de Arte will travel anywhere. Um, I'll fly out. This is Shelter Island, uh, located right off of the uh, tip of Greenport on Long Island. Um, we're going to do a, a dinner this evening for six people. I am super excited about it. We're gonna have an unbelievable seven course dinner. Um, have a lot of awesome and amazing footage coming at you. Yeah, everyone please stand behind the red line on the map. Behind the I red line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I was super excited when I first pulled up. Um, I knew this was going to be an unbelievable event. Uh, they had these beautiful black gates. I had never done an event on Shelter Island. However, I had been there uh, to visit for a couple of hours with my wife. So um, I knew that there was just uh, a lot of really beautiful homes there. And I was just excited um, to, to, to do this event. So like I said, I pulled up, it was beautiful black gates. And you know, you walk in the house and it, it was big. I mean, you could definitely get lost in this house, although I only saw a small portion of it but the outside and the landscape was absolutely breathtaking. Uh, somewhere I definitely would like to go back to uh, and enjoy myself. All right guys, so every time I come on to, to, a, new, to a new dinner with a new environment, um, that's my assistant Natalie, you guys all met her several times. So we have a system, right? So everything works off of chemistry. So her and I have excellent chemistry. She knows exactly what I want. She knows exactly what I'm looking for. She knows exactly how I like everything. Again, organization is key. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start getting um, food prepped so you guys can watch some of the preparation, um, watch how I, watch my thought process behind it. And in the meantime, she's gonna go ahead and set me up, um, I should say set us up for success this evening.
Miss Sasha. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Are you crazy? <laughs> oh my God. His and hers. Wow. His and hers. <laughs> right now, my exhaust is not working. So without an exhaust, you know, as you guys all know, I love to sear. You know, searing is, is, a, is a basic cooking technique that I use a lot of. We sear for three reasons. We sear for color, we sear for texture, and we sear to lock those juices in. I have a lot of searing to do today. However, without an exhaust, it's gonna make things extremely difficult. So right now, still kind of trying to we look into that. Let me take a look at it. I mean, I'm no electrician by any stretch. Sometimes the second set of eyes is, because cooking's my thing. That's after that, everything gets kind of gray and hazy. Yeah. <laughs> we finally um, figured out what was going on on the switchboard. We went up, we went upstairs, and the lighting still wasn't working properly, nor was the fan. Not to mention, I look up and the hoods were completely, they were absolutely disgusting, which I work in a, in a very, very clean environment. Um, it's definitely, uh, the, the environment is a reflection of the chef, of him or herself. Um, but obviously this is a, a rental property. But yeah, the lights, um, the lights weren't working properly. The switches were, were like working opposites. And it was at this point that it's still, we still hadn't um, corrected the problem yet. And uh, it was just through trial and error where actually my, my cameraman, my cameraman actually was the, uh, was the person that helped kind of um, solve the whole problem. And uh, it was at this point where I was kind of relieved. However, you know, when I show up to an event, um, I have, I'm on, I'm on a time limit. And um, sometimes, a lot of times, uh, time is not uh, on your side. And these are unforeseen things that you really, you know, you really should plan for, but unfortunately you can't plan for. So the impression of the kitchen, uh, it was a big, beautiful open space, definitely a lot of area for me to work in, which is what I love. Uh, however, you know, they did have, I believe it was a, a Viking range or a wolf range. Either way, I am not impressed by these ranges whatsoever. I work on them day in and day out. I have a lot of clients that have them. Um, look, we're all entitled to our opinion. I'm not here th trying to throw any company or appliance under the bus by any stretch of the imagination, but I will give you my opinion as a professional. Uh, I'm just not a fan of, you know, Viking or wolf. So I went in and I saw it happened to have a wolf and, um, you know, I've had hiccups with wolves in the past. And uh, that actually is pretty much kind of what happened uh, during, this, during this particular event, ironically. At 5.30, we go with the ice cream. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, sure. It might work. I might, I might actually drop it. For sure. Because so I am sauteing today with clarified butter. The reason when you, you, I use clarified butter, it has a much higher smoking point than regular butter. For those of you that do cook at home, <coughs> I'm sure you've tried to cook with regular butter, and the butter will burn before your, whatever it is you're cooking or sauteing or whatever, um, is complete. That, those are all the fat solubles that are burning up way before, um, way before whatever it is you're trying to cook is, is finished. So we use clarified butter and the cooking point is much higher. So as you can see, the butter's not burning here and I'm, uh, I'm able to get, get a, a really good consistent sear on my scallops and anything else I decide to sear tonight. You want to see a perfect sear? Come check this out. That is absolutely gorgeous. That is beautiful. That is textbook. Textbook searing at its finest.
micro dianthin, please. Micro dianthin. Purple. I am. No, actually, I don't want the micro dianthin. This isn't giving me enough buzz. Open that bag. Let me just take a look at something. I don't know. Let me just look at what I have. I don't know if I want anything. If anything, maybe a pansy. That's it? Okay. You and my wife share the same opinion. Fine. Done. Please let me look at my bacon. Give me the marigolds, please. Marigolds, marigolds, flowers, marigolds. All right, now. No, the sauce is no bacon. Just make a cake. It's no bacon. This is pretty hot. All right, so I'm not even gonna lie right now. The ovens aren't working right, and um, and I'm really trying to figure out. Again, like I said to you guys, there are unforeseen things that happen, and this is one of them. And um, it could be a real issue, but we'll see what happens. So guys, we're doing our ceviche. So as I mentioned earlier, I made our ceviche mixture. We steeped out our onions and some lime juice, and I took the poaching liquid that I zapped our our shrimps in, folded it into the uh, pickled onions with a little Dijon and ketchup. Now we're going to go ahead and dump our shrimp in and dump our cilantro in. Cilantro. Beautiful. As our shrimps steep out, they're now beginning to slowly cook. The, uh, the fin uh, I should say, we're starting to finish the cooking process now. Since, like I said, I blanched them out for about literally five seconds, pulled them out and shocked them in an ice bath. And now we'll just let them carry. Give a little taste, just to double check. That's gonna be really good. Add a little bit of salt to this. Now that ceviche liquid will pick up all of the true flavor from the shrimp on top of um, the langoustine stock in which we used to poach our shrimp to begin with. And that just looks really sexy, like really, really sexy. So the ceviche, it's funny you should ask. So that was uh, just a, another, another, one of, uh, another one of numerous things that had gone wrong that evening. So what happened was I had tasted the ceviche before it was going out. Now I taste everything that leaves my kitchen because I want to make sure that the vision that I have is going to transport into the client's palate. Therefore I taste everything. Unfortunately, when I bit into the shrimp, the shrimp was still raw. So ceviche traditionally, the acidity in which you're steeping out, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to, uh, uh, that, that you're trying to cook through the acidity, whether it's shrimp or scallops or fish, whatever, uh, is fully cooked. Unfortunately, it wasn't. So it was still raw. So what I did is I, I served the lobster second course and I switched the second course ceviche to the third course. In the meantime, in order to speed up that cooking process, I had one of my team members boil some water. We took the shrimp, threw it in water because it, it literally only needed a few seconds in boiling water time but it probably needed about another 90 minutes in ceviche cooking time, which is totally different. So what we wound up doing was boiling it, brought it up to the temperature it needed to be at, threw it on a sheet pan, 
to, uh, to spread out the protein, to ensure that it would cool down uh, very quick. Popped it right in the freezer, then took it right out of the freezer, stuck it right back in the ceviche liquid, um, and finished it that way. And we were able to get the course out on time. And most importantly, without the clients really knowing or understanding exactly what catastrophic thing had just happened in the kitchen. Black, black, give me the scoop. I got it. Uh, scoop is in my bag. I got a secret. I got a secret to tell you, but I'll tell you in a little while. Remind me. Remind me about the secret. This is reality TV, so I'm keeping it real. Yeah, the big secret. So the big secret was there, unfortunately, are times when things are forgotten. And this was completely my fault. Um, look, I'm not perfect, not at all, not by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a human being, which is why we have a team, which is why when everyone wants to thank the chef for such an amazing job, I'm very humble and I always say it's, without my team, I don't exist and vice versa. So, but this one, however, was my fault. I, um, there was a, a particular ingredient, or I should say item on the menu that was supposed to be served with a particular course, which was actually the lobster course, it was supposed to go with a, um, it was supposed to go with the strawberry sorbet. And unfortunately, there was so many things going on that my brain was, was a little skewered and uh, I wasn't focused the way I normally am because I was focused on all of the unforeseen things that had been happening at that event. And uh, this was definitely an oversight and I had forgot to plate the sorbet. However, a really good chef or a really good professional will know how to think on his or her feet. And again, these are things that you cannot plan for. So immediately I had double checked the menu after the uh, course had gone out and I realized I had forgotten the sorbet. And it was at this point I had let my team know and immediately it came to me. I said, you know what? We'll sell it as a palate cleanser. So these are just little things that um, you can't, I didn't learn that in school. You can't teach anyone that. This is just, um, this is just experience guiding you and leading the way. Here's our chop. So this is our tomahawk, guys.
the tasting food real quick. Okay everybody, I'm Chef Matthew Alexander and you've just experienced a day in my life. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.